Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from OpenMP. We have their OpenMP marketing coordinator, Matt Van Waveren. Welcome to the show today, Matt. Thank you, Rich. Uh, thank you for your welcome. You bet, you and bet. Happy to, to be here. Well, thank you. So, uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to talk much at SC12, but uh, did you have a good show? Yes, we had a fine show. Uh, we we uh, celebrated our 15 years anniversary at this um, SE12. So OpenMP started in 1997. And to uh, celebrate, we had uh, beer and cake at the stand and uh, a lot of uh, attention, a lot of public. Well, well, good, good. That, that is, for HPC, that is a long time. So, uh, um, <laughs> so anyway, Matt, I thought, you know, why don't we get some details on what's going on with OpenMP? And um, I brought your slides up. Why don't we start there? Thanks. Yes. Thanks, Rich. Yes. We well. The message I want. One of the messages I want to give with uh, this presentation is that OpenMP is expanding into new fields, and the OpenMP organization is still growing, even after 15 years. Let me first go back into the history of OpenMP to set the ground. The uh, before 1997. Uh, there was a need for specifications to help programmers in parallelizing new code. So one of the problems at the time was that in order to parallelize, programmers needed to look for uh, regions of code that they could parcel out to different processors. And also, since these different regions of code may need to share data, the access to this data need, needed to be uh, set up correctly. And in order to solve this problem, to have a correct sequencing of data access, the different vendors came up with compiler directives that helped out, that specified how to parcel out the code to different uh, processors. But then the second problem came up that each of the the vendor has it, had its own set of directives and several vendors came up, got together in order to specify a standard set of directives, which led to the creation of OpenMP. The vendors are, the original vendors are listed on the <clears throat> this slide. So SGI, Cray and AI got together under influence of ASCII to set up the standard set of directives. And DEC, IBM, and Intel joined them when the OpenMP organization was set up in 97. Then after 97, first uh, the OpenMP specification continued to evolve in order to address industry needs. Firstly, as two parallel set of specs, one for Fortran, and one for C. Which joined together in 2005 in a single spec for OpenMP C, C++ and Fortran. Then in 2008, OpenMP 3 was released with a main edition of task parallelism. So this means in addition to loop-based parallelism, where you pass a lot of different loop uh, iterations to processors, now tasks can be created and parceled out to different threads. In 2011, OpenMP 3.1 was released, where the task extension was finalized, and Affinity, Atomic, C++, and MinMax reduction were added. Along with this continue evolving of OpenMP, the OpenMP ARB organization was continuously growing, uh, leading to a total number of members of 24 at the moment, and still new members are being added. So both vendors and users of OpenMP products are members of the ARB. The strategy of OpenMP 
is firstly to strengthen the base. So traditionally, OpenMP has been strong in shared memory and HPC. So this needs to be continued. But in addition, OpenMP has the objective to expand into new territories, which are accelerators, DSPs, multi-core, and embedded systems. And naturally, OpenMP aims to connect to user requests. For instance, the OpenMP meetings are being scheduled and localized to user sites. And the meetings are the meetings where the OpenMP specifications are being discussed. OpenMP has seen quite a lot of action as SE12. We've made several releases. Firstly, the technical report on accelerator extensions. And this technical report details directive used for the execution of loops and regions of code on attached accelerators. So the directives in this report are a work in progress. That's why it's called the technical report. And the goal is to get early feedback on the proposed directives. So notice that this technical report describes a model for the offloading of code and data onto a target device. So on this slide, we see the press release for the release of the technical report. The next slide, slide, we see the press release for the release of release candidate number one of draft OpenMP4. This was also released as SC12, and this release candidate that includes thread affinity extensions, allowing users to define where to execute OpenMP threads, initial support for Fortran 2003, SIMD constructs to vectorize both serial as well as parallelized loops, user-defined reductions, and sequentially consisting atomics. OpenACC is a spin-off from four OpenMP members, and this is a specification that uh, was focused on addressing immediate customer needs. And to hold the IP and to beta test the OpenMP accelerator implementation. So the OpenMP aims to merge with OpenMC ACC in the future. So in time, it will be folded back to OpenMP. So the future releases, OpenMP plans also on releases in 2013. So this would be a second release candidate of OpenMP4 in the first quarter, which will include accelerated directives, error handling and tasking extensions. And the aim is to release OpenMP4 final specs in 2013. So this final specs will include the accelerator extensions and all the extensions of the release candidate one. Well. Other activities of the OpenMP Architecture Review Board are to extend the list of OpenMP applications on the OpenMP website. So users are invited to submit their applications to the OpenMP website add new members, amongst other the Sandia National Lab. We will have re regular press releases. An FAQ will be, is to be published on the website. And we're investigating linkage with other standard groups, ISO standard C++, multi-core association, and the FPGA group. So the conclusion, the messages we want to give are firstly that OpenMP is extending in from traditional HPC into new fields, accelerators, DSPs, multi-core embedded systems, of which, and the technical report unattached accelerators is one of the examples of that. We've got a lot of action at the moment, release of the technical report, release of the release candidate for OpenMP4, and the final version of OpenMP4 is planned for 2013. The strengths of OpenMP 
is that there's a broad compiler support on three general purpose languages, which are Fortran, C, and C++. And the membership is growing now for 24 members, and still other members are coming in. Okay, thank you for your attention. Well, th thanks for that, Matt. A, a couple of questions here. You know, as, as you merge with OpenACC, is the goal there to make code more portable? The, yes, the goal is to be able to support multiple devices. Um, and uh, the devices of the different members of the OpenMP organization, Intel, NVIDIA, Texas Instruments, amongst others. So the goal is that the code will run well on all these member devices. Well, that's terrific. You know, they've uh, uh, OpenACC has, uh, has, has really showcased a lot of what's possible with directives and making it um, easier to uh, exploit the parallelism in those devices. So uh, I think this is a great move by OpenMP. Uh, and, and you mentioned that uh, your, your plan for the 4.0 release that will happen sometime in, in 2013? That's right, yes. We hope as soon as possible in 2013. Yeah, the first release, the sec release candidate number two is planned for first quarter 2013. And hopefully soon after we will have the final release of the specifications. So, so Matt, you know, it seems like uh, at SE 12 this year, you know, hybrid supercomputing, you know, accelerated supercomputing was, was, was everywhere, right? Whether it be from, um, as you mentioned, Intel, NVIDIA, or even uh, Texas Instruments, so, uh, and there's a number of others. Uh, do you really, uh, does OpenMP really see this as an opportunity to uh, really take off and start growing much faster than in the past? We hope, yes, we, we, we see that as an opportunity, definitely, to, uh, to grow beyond the traditional HPC shared memory systems, to follow the user, the, the user trends in, in the user needs, and cover a broad range of devices. So accelerators, DDR4, 